that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was no killed. Way. When it was announced that the first ever international season of RuPaul's Drag Race was in the works, everyone was excited to see how it would all play out. And in just under a year after filming the season, World of Wonder would officially release the promo for UK vs. The World, which featured nine queens across different international franchises, including the UK, the United States, Canada, Thailand, and Holland. Yet despite the excitement that fans had for the season, UK vs. The World would gain a pretty negative reputation among the fan base, with many considering it to be one of the worst seasons of the franchise as a whole. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the trajectory of Blue Hydrangea, why fans were so upset about her win, and the timeline behind the shocking eliminations that sent people into a social media frenzy. But before we start, I wanted to remind you to please subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Twitter at GreenGateYT for updates on future videos. Now, let's begin. In September 2019, when the first season of RuPaul's Drag Race UK was announced, it was a milestone for the show's franchise. Because while it's true that Drag Race Thailand is officially the first Drag Race spin-off, the UK version would be the first international season to be hosted by RuPaul. Among the new queens, Blue Hydrangea had gained some notoriety online for her eclectic makeup looks, a popularity that was then boosted by appearing on the show. As for her run on her season, while she had her good moments, it was clear from her early on that the crown was going to be between Davina de Campo or de Vivian. That being said, the runway she displayed on the premiere episode was outstanding, particularly her Queen Elizabeth look. On season 1 episode 2, Blue would end up landing in the bottom 2 against Scaredy Cat, which if you didn't know, Scaredy Cat at the time held a record for the youngest contestant to ever compete on the show, at 19 years old. Although nowadays it seems that he's quit drag. Anyways, they would end up lip syncing to Venus by Banana Rama with Blue winning the lip sync and Scaredy Cat going home. Two weeks later, on Season 1 Episode 4, Blue Hydrangea actually did a pretty good job playing Mary Berry for her Snatch Game character. Even after rewatching it, I still laugh a lot at Blue's humor. Unfortunately, her performance was overshadowed by the amazing job that Bag of Chips and the Vivian did with their characters. Although her runway for that episode was really a highlight from the season. What sells this look is how detailed she managed to do the eyeball effect on her face. If this impresses you, I strongly advise you follow Blue on Instagram. So many of her makeup looks are just pure eye candy. Anyway, the following week, on Season 1 Episode 5, the forever iconic performance of Break Up Bye Bye would be performed by the Frock Destroyers, a girl group comprised of Blue Hydrangea, Davina DeCampo, and Bag of Chips. One of the most infamous lines from the song was when Blue rhymed the word home with home, with quote, I can be the hero for the gays back home, you better watch out, now we'll send them home. But in actuality, the original line that Blue had written for her verse was supposed to end with the line, now I'm in the zone. But Davina de Campo asked Blue to change it last minute to the word home. There was a moment in this episode that really shed a light into the background that Blue comes from. What I'm referring to is that Blue grew up in Northern Ireland, which is a place that's known not to be very LGBT friendly, and the gay scene that's close to non-existent. Blue talks about this on the main stage and how she feels that in a way she really is a hero for the young queer kids back home that have nothing else they can turn to for comfort. It really does put things into perspective. Well, um, so I just I just want to be like that kind of ray of hope for like the little kids and stuff back home because it's very gloomy back there and I have to be rainbow and bright and blue. She would then get her first challenge win along with Davina the Campo and Bag of Chips. Which brings us to episode 6, where after doing a commercial challenge, Blue would end up getting negative critiques from the judges. The bottom three queens would be Blue Hydrangea, Baga Chips, and Cheryl Hole. And despite Baga admitting in Untucked that she did not know the words to the song and that she knew she was gonna go home if she landed in the bottom, she ended up being saved. Meanwhile, Blue Hydrangea was up for elimination with Cheryl Hole. If you ever feel hopeless, imagine being Blue Hydrangea and getting placed in the bottom two against Cheryl Hole to perform a song by Cheryl in front of the singer Cheryl herself. Despite all the odds, Blue tried her best to stay, but she would end up losing the lip sync, landing in 5th place for the season. Shortly after the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 1, many fans were left disappointed as the production decided not to do a vote for Miss Congeniality. 
Poppy. Soap Pop the Drag Queen, the Queen for the People, ended up making a poll on Twitter with all the queens that competed on the season. The only queens that weren't included was the Vivian because she had already won the crown and Scaredy Cat for reasons unknown. Anyways, it would end up coming down to Blue Hydrangea and Something Wrong, with fans choosing Blue to be the unofficial Miss Congeniality. Or official, I guess, according to Bob. This would later come full circle as Blue would become the only winner next to Monet to also hold the title of Miss Congeniality. Yeah, you know, there was a point in time during um, Drag Race where you were the most decorated queen in the, of, of the show. I know. After UK season one aired, Blue would find a decent amount of success, especially with the group, the Frock Destroyers, along with her makeup looks on Instagram, which then brings us to UK versus the world. By the time Blue was announced as a contestant, it had been almost two years since she had last appeared on Drag Race. But why did people end up not liking it? One of the main reasons cited for why UK vs. the World was not a good season was due to how all the front runners were eliminated early on. Specifically, the season's elimination order was super controversial, starting off with Lemon and Janie Jack A being placed in the bottom two. And despite the general consensus being that Janie's talent show performance was the worst, Pangina Heel still chose to eliminate Lemon. This was a gaggy way to start the season. And while it was sad to see Lemon go home, it was understandable as to why Pangina came to that decision. I mean, at that point, it benefited her more to form an alliance with Janie, since Lemon would most likely be more loyal to her Canadian sister Jimbo. Nevertheless, Lemon was a class act, and no pun intended, she didn't seem all that bitter about her elimination. I want to know, what have we all learned from this experience? Let's start with you, Lemon. Nothing. Anyway, stream Sticky Sweet on all platforms. On the second episode's elimination, Rama would again stir up online when Jujube and Cheryl Hole were placed in the bottom two. But Janie Jacke chose to eliminate Cheryl Hole despite many fans feeling that Jujube should have gone home because it was her fourth time back on the show and she wasn't doing good on the season. But it's episode three where things really start to hit the fan. The bottom two for the episode would be between Jimbo and Jujube. While it was true that Jimbo had done the worst in the challenge, his runway was among the best of the week. And to top it all off, he was placed in the top two for the first two episodes of the season. But Pangina Heels would end up choosing to eliminate Jimbo, resulting in Jimbo breaking down in tears and sashaying away. It's also rumored that Jimbo's reaction to his elimination was a lot more dramatic than what we saw. According to Pangina, the reason behind her decision to eliminate Jimbo was based off of how the queens did in the challenge. And since Jimbo Jimbo was the worst that week, she thought it was fair to send her home. Yet viewers didn't even have time to take in the shock from Jimbo's elimination as the following week's episode would then overshadow it. Now, the queens from UK vs the world were allowed to hang out with each other when they were in their hotel rooms. On one of the days after Jimbo had already been eliminated, Blue recalls a memory that while making breakfast, Jimbo turned to Blue and said, quote, you better win Snatch Game and send Pangina home. But Blue took it more as a joke since she didn't think she'd actually get the opportunity to do so. That's when on episode 4, the Snatch Game would take place. Blue Hydrangea ended up playing two different characters. One was Mike Myers, with the other one being Dr. Evil. She ended up doing a really good job and has credited a fellow drag queen named Olympia Avalanche, who has a channel named Novimpia on YouTube, for helping her get her Snatch Game characters together. So for the Snatch Game episode, the top two would end up being Bag of Chips and Blue Hydrangea. Once it came down to Blue Having to decide who to eliminate, Pangina was pretty high up on the list because she felt Pangina hadn't played a fair game, considering she had sent Jimbo home despite Jimbo being in the top two for two out of three episodes that she was in. Blue also took into account the fact that she was fading into the background, and she knew that if she based her decision off of the way that fans would perceive her, then she'd end up regretting it for the rest of her life. So she made the decision that would best benefit her, which landed her in the finals and ultimately winning the crown. Episode 5 would then conclude in Blue Hydrangea choosing to eliminate Pangina Heels, who immediately began to cry and apologizing to her family and friends back home for disappointing them. It was clear that everyone on set was very disturbed by Pangina's reaction, including Blue, who was shaking in her boots. Now, Pangina's elimination was shocking, but it was also expected. After I saw Jimbo's elimination, it was clear to me that Pangina's time was now counted, because 
because regardless of whether Jimbo's elimination was justified or not, we can still acknowledge the fact that at the time of his bottom two placement, he was one of the front runners of the competition. In simple terms, it was now fair game for any queen to play the game however they wanted. In a way, Blue Hydrangea was branding herself. Because in order to make a name for yourself these days, it's not so much about winning the season, but instead being the most memorable. Like how Naomi Smalls is always remembered for eliminating Manila Luzon, or Ben de la Creme for eliminating Ben de la Creme. But these decisions do come with its risks. Because you never know how the public is going to react. Despite this, Blue was very shook up when she saw Pangina's reaction to her elimination. As were many viewers at home. I actually think it was Pangina's breakdown that really elevated the way fans were feeling about what had just transpired. Yet while Blue did sympathize with Pangina, she still didn't regret her decision because it was based off of strategy and not maliciousness. After Pangina's elimination, Blue spoke to the other queens about how she's worried whether or not she will still have a career after this, referring to the rabid fans that have a history with turning on a queen the moment they do something they don't like. But regardless, she was pretty happy to have been able to play such a pivotal role in the season and instantly become a frontrunner. In regards to the fan reaction, there was a lot of very upset people. And rightfully so, I mean the whole point of watching the storylines of these queens is to be able to get invested into them. So naturally, when a queen we like gets eliminated, it's fine to feel angry about what happened and it's cool to vent about it to your friends. But sending waves of hate to a queen is just a stupid thing to do. On the 24th of February 2022, Blue tweeted saying that she loves being part of the Drag Race fandom, but she's beginning to see a darker side of it. The toxic response from the fan base is unwarranted and she shouldn't have to be dealing with all of the hate. But she's lucky she's thick-skinned, saying, quote, This is a television show. Take a step back and look at the world around us. There are so many other things that need our energy other than fighting about a lipstick. And as Alyssa Edwards would say, it's not personal, it's just drag. Even Pangina called out the fans online that were flooding Blue's social media with hateful messages, adding that there's no hard feelings between her and Blue, so there's no need for people to be so hateful. Another thing that fans didn't like was the way that Blue had stood by her decision to eliminate Pangina, because according to them, it was a cowardly move to do, and she shouldn't have won the season because of it. It's also important to know the Mo Hard, who had also made it to the finals of UK vs. The World, had performed really well throughout the season, but similar to Blue, would only land the top two for one episode. But she wouldn't win the lip sync, meaning Mo Hard and Bag of Chips were the only queens without a Rue Peter badge in the finale. And while it was unfortunate that Mo didn't end up winning the crown, she did succeed in showcasing some of her best looks that she's had on the show. I also think that there's nothing wrong with Blue wanting to relish in the the fact that she eliminated Pangina. In the same way Naomi Smalls relished in the fact that she eliminated Manila, and Alaska relished in the fact that she eliminated Tatiana twice. It's really just not even that serious. And sometimes being the person who got unfairly eliminated can be a boost in a queen's career. The fanbase then sees you as a robbed queen wanting to support you and getting you the bookings you deserve. But a lot of fans justify their love for a queen by going after other queens who they perceive as enemies. Moving on, it's common knowledge that Blue's prize for winning UK vs the world was awful. As advertised on the show, RuPaul and Blue did in fact collaborate together on a song. But once it was released, everyone realized it wasn't even a brand new original song. It was just a compilation of RuPaul's greatest hits, where Blue barely had any lines. It also didn't even have a music video. I mean, if you'd like to consider this video that just showcases all of Blue's runways, then I guess you could say it has a video. The ultimate cop-out though was the fact that the cover art for the album was comprised of recycled promo shoots, and there wasn't even any special fan art or promotion for the song. If there's anything that fans should be upset about, it's the prize for this season. I mean, the lack of effort that was made to create a prize that was at least desirable is pretty disappointing. An interesting thing I noticed while re-watching UK vs The World is that on episode 4, the Queen spoke about how cancel culture has affected the drag race community, with them having to watch any little thing they say and fear that people online are going to drag you and try to cancel you for making one mistake. 
The girls all acknowledge that holding people accountable is important, but it should be done for serious issues and not for some random opinion that you didn't like. I mean, even Pinjina Heels talks about how she got cancelled by a lot of fans during the airing of Drag Race Thailand because fans didn't agree with a lot of her judging throughout the season. Essentially, in the same way that Blue got harassed by a bunch of fans that didn't like the way she was judging a competition, Pinjina also had to deal with that same thing years ago with Drag Race Thailand. But of course, this powerful conversation would have no effect on the fanbase. Basically, the whole concept of the toxic fans isn't exactly a group of people that no one knows about. The toxic fans are part of the same group of people who watch Watch RuPaul's Drag Race related videos, follow the queens on social media, and tune in to the show every week. The same fans who harassed and threatened Pangina Heels during Drag Race Thailand are the same ones that harassed Blue for eliminating Pangina, Pangina for eliminating Jimbo, Naomi for eliminating Manila, and the list goes on. It's really just a cycle that doesn't end. I mean, look at this post from Reddit titled Blue Hydrangea Being Delusional, which is in reference to a reply that Blue made on Twitter regarding the Monet vs. Shea lip sync to Supernova, a song that she had performed when she won. UK vs. The World. Now there's absolutely no question that the Shea vs. Monet lip sync of Supernova was miles ahead better than Blue vs. Mo Heart. But even then, the UK vs. The World version wasn't all that bad. I remember that even if a lot of Blue's dance moves didn't exactly land, it was at least nice to see her giving it her all to try to win the crown. And as someone that had been rooting for Mo Heart during the season, it felt like she just didn't get as strong of a storyline and having Blue win was sort of symbolic to how cutthroat the season truly was. Moving on, the fanbase also tends to flip-flop a lot with their general consensus on certain topics. For example, if a queen gets eliminated too early, fans will consider it to be a robbery and chant that the show has quote, mistreated her. But if a queen makes it all the way to the end and wins a crown, then the competition is considered to be rigged. Like when people accuse All Star 7 of rigging the competition for Jinx, feeling that production had too much involvement in the way that the season played out. But when we did get a season where the girls could decide whatever they wanted, fans called out the production for allowing the queens to have too much control over the elimination. Yet when it's up to production to make the decisions, they also get flack. And it's also true that even in settings, like all-star seasons, production still has a degree of control in terms of who wins the challenge, as well as who lands in the bottom two. But even then, the queens that win the challenges still have the freedom of choice to decide for themselves whether or not they'd like to favor what production wants in terms of storyline or break the pattern altogether. All of this has created a situation where Blue's legacy is supposedly tied to what fans consider to be a terrible season, with quote, unfair results. And it just doesn't make sense to me. It sort of mirrors Chad Michaels who won what many considered to be a very questionable season. But even then, no one really discredits Chad for winning All Stars 1. The solution really is that if you're upset about a queen's elimination, there's many healthy ways that you can express it. Such as tipping them online, buying their merch, or just supporting them on social media. What you shouldn't do is send hate, insults, and death threats to queens that you don't like especially if the reason is because you didn't like the decision a contestant made in a competition. Now, as this video reaches its end, there's a couple things that I wanted to discuss about UK versus the world. The first is that the real victims of the season are all of the queens who competed on it, from the person who went home first to the person that won. This season should have been a lot more than what we got, but we also received what's in my opinion one of the most chaotically entertaining seasons to come out of the franchise. I personally can't wait to show this season to newer fans of the show just for the roller coaster ride they're going to experience. So when it comes to UK vs the world, there's definitely a lot of things that could have been done better, such as the cast having at least 10 queens instead of 9, or the episode count being 10 episodes as opposed to 6. It felt like by the time the season was really starting to get good, everything suddenly came into a halt. This can be blame on the low production budget for the season, but at this point, I feel like that that's not much of an excuse. I mean, I'm not a TV producer, but you'd think there'd be more of a level of trust on the amount of success that the first international all-star season was going to have. 
In conclusion, Blue Hydrangea, like many other winners, had many people very upset after she won the crown for Queen of the World. Yet her season, despite short, was great television through and through. In April 2022, Blue ended up receiving her crown and scepter in the mail and was absolutely delighted to have it. She will also have a great underdog storyline when she returns for the second all winner season. Although she might be competing alongside fellow winners Jasmine Masters, who holds one of the titles from the Hollis Lace Spectacular, and Ronnie, who won our hearts in season 9. So, it's really anyone's game. And I also wanted to take a moment to thank those of you who've decided to support me on Patreon, which includes Matthew Burns, Damien's Pink Shirt, Azure, and Emma Malander. And if you'd like to join the Patreon, the link will be in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Comment below what you think about this topic. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at GreenGayYT. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can find the link in the description. See you guys next time. Thank you.